Well hello again and welcome back. Uh, today I'm just sort of kind of tinkering about in the garden and um, I was getting my greenhouse ready. Um, hopefully it's spring. The weather certainly is getting slightly warmer and um, I thought this year as, as, not, as I normally do you know I, I try and grow some annual um, bedding plants. Um, it doesn't cost a lot of money really if you've got a greenhouse and a few packets of seeds and it's amazing what you can grow. Um, but um, I had a look, I washed my greenhouse all out the other day and I had a look and my very ancient um, Aladdin paraffin greenhouse heater uh, looked as though it was in need of a bit of a attention. Uh, I don't use this a lot now. Um, it's very difficult, I mean it can be truly expensive heating greenhouses, um, whatever form you, you, you use, if it's electric, propane gas, um, paraffin which is getting harder to find uh, locally, um, but, I, but I like this uh, form of heating, this, um, I, I've had, this is my second one of these, I, I bought this off eBay, as, uh, this one about 20 years ago, I had um, one identical to this prior um, to this and I bought that in 1979 and um, this is the Aladdin series 22 heater it's a it's a proper designed paraffin greenhouse heater it's not designed or was never designed to use inside gracious it's just a very, very basic um, wick um, and um, I thought I'd, I'd try and tart it up a bit um, for want of a better word and um, put a new wick on it it needs a new micro window you can't you can't see the micro there you can't see when you've lit it what the flames looking like through that it's gone very discolored so um i thought i'd just do a little video um on um you know restoring this if anyone buys one of these they're still out there you can still buy them on ebay you can pick them up in car boot sales garage sales that kind of thing and if you've got a little greenhouse they are a wonderful heater because um, they're what is called a blue flame heater if you know anything about paraffin heaters you've probably heard that before and they do you, you have them set so they burn with a blue flame and they don't smell particularly nasty um, they burn very cleanly they're quite efficient um, this is a two inch wick two inch size wick it's a 203 burn on this model so it's a two inch wick so they do they do, you know, drink a drop of paraffin if you have it turned up, you know, you can turn the whip up or down, and, but on a very low setting, um, just to keep the frost off any seedlings you've got, I find this is ideal in, that, in, in my 8x8 uh, wooden greenhouse, um, and it doesn't burn a lot of paraffin overnight, you know, I'd, I'd only use it overnight if there's going to be a frost and you've got some little, some little seeds coming up, it's ideal just to keep the frost off. Um, years ago, you know, um, before you could buy all these plug plants and um, garden re garden ready plants and have them all delivered to you in May and June um, via the internet. Um, before that, were before those were available, you know, I, I grew all my own bedding plants and I'd often start them off in January, February in the greenhouse. You know, things like geraniums, patians, and the bedding busy lids. Yeah, busy lizards in patterns and the bedding begonias which need a long time to grow and if you're growing them from seed you know you've got to really be started middle of January February and um, then I could get through I, I'd, I'd actually I had a 40, um, 45 gallon barrel um, storage for paraffin and used to have it commercially delivered and um, I could burn you know a heck of a lot of paraffin in a, in a season but then, as I say, you couldn't buy the plants online as you can now. So, uh, enough of me rambling on about that. Um, I thought we'd have a look at this and see what I'm going to do. And they say, if you buy one of these, this might be of some sort of help with you, or if you just want to watch along. Um, anyway, you can take this top section off. Um, and it's a question of, of four little brass bolts there which I've um, why this is so wet it's, it's not the tank actually isn't leaking I've sprayed all these little bolts um, with WD-40 um, overnight to try and loosen the bolts up because I want to try and take this section off the tank and as I've got a little socket and um, Still quite tight actually. I mean, 
there we go um, that's the first one it's a little little brass um, bolt there that comes off obviously anything that's been in a greenhouse it's a very um, harsh environment you're watering it gets wet it gets hot it gets dry then you water it um, and obviously it stays in there over winter when when there's you know I don't grow nothing in the greenhouse so it's quite a harsh environment um, so hence why this heater has suffered over the years a little bit but I'm quite, quite surprised How easy these are coming off actually um, you know considering and there we go so that's one side off and um, I'll bring you back in when, we, when we've got it off um, so that's all the um, bolts off now and it should be just a question of lifting that as you can see that section just lifts off and uh, it's as easy as that and uh, I can now obviously clean it I'm not I'm not going to repaint this section I'm just going to give it a really good clean wash down and clean because there again um, if you've got a greenhouse it's always best to try and keep it as clean as possible you do get things like um, spores of them um, if you've had botrytis that's like the grey mold um, they can linger on surfaces like this and um, so it's good Thing to wash it in just to basically some washing up liquid and warm water and give it a good wash down and a clean off and that's what we'll do with that section there there are four shake proof washers washers on on there as well which we'll take off and make sure we don't lose those and there we go then we can give that a clean up uh, the next thing I want to do is actually take the burner base out and by and to do that you remove these curled nuts now these can be very problematical on these heaters this side the um, actual stud broke off several years ago when I was changing a wick so I've got to be extra careful how I take this off and um, how I normally do it these 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 aren't these are rounded um, hopefully you'll see that you can't get a spanner or anything on there you really not like need some grips some old grips some pliers some water pump grips that type of thing to get a good grip on these and and you've got to be really careful because the actual threaded part is made of aluminium and they're going on to a steel stud and so the aluminium tends to corrode but uh, I'll get a tool and say so we'll try and loosen those off Now there we go, as I said you see, um, that had so corroded on, um, I hadn't switched the camera on, but um, the stud again actually broke, um, so I've got to think of some of, get some other form of fixing for both, for both sides now, but that shouldn't be too much of an issue, um, hopefully we can um, make something up to refit this you know to perhaps drill through and and get something in that and um, so as to hold this uh, mechan hold the wick back on in place I'll take the other one off anyway and show you how this assembly then lifts out get the wick assembly out without releasing that one and say because I've had to put a, um, my own new stud through there because it sheared off a couple of years well three or four years ago um, um, so obviously I'm going to try and remove it because I want to try and paint the tank because the tank is so rusty but you see that's how you remove the if you ever want to change the wick you've got to get this unit out and um, we'll have a look put a look at putting a new wick on it um, a bit later I have got a new wick coming for it because it's it's very worn and it's very burnt they do tend to over a period of time they do tend to carbonize although you have to keep them well you keep them clean with a wick cleaner they do still carbonize and burn down and burn a little bit uneven as well so we'll drain the fuel out of the tank and then take it from there uh, 
so um, there we go. I've got the tank drained out. I've got the, the old paraffin, which we shall, I shall put through. There is a certain amount of water, and I um, don't think you'll see that yuck in there. But I will put through that. I've got a, a nice uh, sieve water separator funnel. Um, so rather than waste that paraffin, um, that can be mixed with some new stuff. If I put it through the water separator and then the filter funnel, that will take all that yuck out of there and it can be used rather than waste it. Um, uh, the, the tank is in a bit of a sorry state really, but it, it seems um, sound enough still. Um, I did get the other, I did get the other stud off, um, the one that I've had to, you know, um, bodge up myself. Um, so we'll um, have to think about making something similar there. The trouble is um, with these, it's obviously um, not having welding facilities myself. You know, how do you? It's hold, <laughs> holding the stud up there, um, but we'll worry about that when we come to refit the wick. Um, for now, I'm going to clean all the tank up. I'm not going to go over um, ridiculous with it. I'm just going to clean it up and hopefully um, paint it in some kind of orange paint to um, just make it look a bit better and you know try and preserve it for another couple of three years. Because sadly, these aren't made new anymore. You can't get a new one. Um, Years ago, you, you could have gone and uh, phoned Aladdin up in Middlesex, in Greenford, in Middlesex, as it used to be, and you could have bought a new tank, or you could have bought a new, you know, um, gauge or new cap or anything. Any, you could have bought one of these new, um, but sadly, that isn't the case anymore, as I say. Um, so right, we'll clean that up, and I'll come back and show you when we've cleaned up, and we'll carry on with it then. Well, I'm back. Still. Uh, having a go at this heater, this little Aladdin uh, Series 22 um, 203 burner greenhouse heater, um, and I thought I'd just show you. I mean, obviously this is only of interest if you if if somebody buys one of these or wants a greenhouse heater, so buys uh, one that they you know a cheap one, say off eBay. Um, I mean, if you do, and like me, um, can we see that the these are were original steel studs that came through here which holds the burner assembly the brass burner assembly on um, and there were like steel um, studs that went through and had been welded to the tank now mine um, can you see that they were held on by an aluminium uh, kind of locking nut and what often happens, obviously, Alex, it's a, it's a poor design, I think. Or, but I mean, these these weren't obviously meant with a long life. These heaters, they're way over what their life design was, I think. But um, if they're in an environment like a greenhouse, they often get rusty, and the stud rusts, and it virtually welds itself to that um, aluminium stud. And when you try and remove that to get the burner out. To put a new wick on uh, you break the stud off and that's not a problem if that happens to you don't don't you know panic about that the heater isn't you know don't throw the heater away all I've done is found some thin um, brass stud uh, and then obviously put that through and then bolted it and you've got enough room um, clearance because the um, we show you that goes on like that, and then uh, you have a new bolt that comes, slides down, and holds the burner in place. Um, I also found that when I took all this off, um, I got quite a few holes here as well um, that just rusted through. So I had a go and bought one of these. Um, uh, I've always want, been wanting to try them for some time, one of these aluminium brazing rods and um, just with a little propane gas torch like I've got I've sort of filled some of the holes um, with that and it seems to have worked well, I've then obviously rubbed it down and I'm going to give this tank, um, if we zoom out, I'm going to give the tank a quick paint of it. it's had a basic rub down we're not going to stand over it, um, you know, it, it's it's not really 
it's not the space shuttle is it it's going in a greenhouse after all said and done and um, it's just to stop it getting any more rust on it really so we're going to give it a quick coat of paint and um, I'll then show it you then then we'll put a new wick on it and put one or two other new parts on it and um, hopefully it would be good as new and run for many more years to come so that's a little update where we are at with it. As I say, I've given the tank a really good washout. The tank is very clean in there now, and it's had a good, uh, good, really good clean out, and I've dried it all out. And um, so I'll carry on prepping it a bit more, and then give it a coat of paint. Um, but that's it. As I say, if your studs do break, if these steel studs do break off, find um, a new. I prefer to use like a brass bolt, and obviously you can get your hand in. You can get your hand in here, and without the um, wick assembly there you can get your hand in and work round it and I have also brazed these in with the aluminium brazing rods just to hold them a bit firmer um, and also put a little nut on top and bottom um, obviously that that just then holds it all nicely in place and then they're not certainly going to move they're not going to move anywhere they're not they're as good as the original ones